fastest growing podcast up in the world right now, you know Say word. Only fans, real estate, talking in fashion, let them know what's happening Say word. On and off the court, in the field with the sports, let them know what's up Say word. The conversation is active, from movies to action, it's the main attraction Say word. Another episode of the world's fastest growing podcast, we back in Houston, Texas I got one of the Houston original legendary basketball players, NBA, my guy, D. Ewing. D. Ewing, what's good, my guy? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you checking in with us, man. How you feeling? How's everything? I'm blessed, man. I can't complain. I can dig it. At all. I can dig it. Um, I was We was talking off the record. Let's just get to it, man. Um, Houston, Texas. Let's talk about being raised here, the culture, all that. Well, uh, yeah. So I'm, I mean, I was I was raised here, originally born in Florida. My family's from Florida, but you know, I've, I've been here since I was three. Okay. So this is all I know, really. Uh, me personally, man. Uh, hometown, love it. Always came back to it. City has gave me a lot, gave me a lot of love, showed me a lot of love. Uh, but I come from it, like really. You know, I had two older brothers, so I come from the real basketball culture of knowing the guys before me. And that was kind of my motivation of, uh, you know, of growing in the game, wanting to be good, wanting to reach certain levels, uh, you know, starting back in the early 90s of some of the better talent that came from this city. So, Max, you this as you talk about your older brothers, who's the nicest out of y'all The really, like, was the nicest? We know you went to the league, you yeah. know what I'm trying to say? So, we, we got to give you the pass, but who really was, like, the nicest out of y'all? Easy, and I give all due respect to my brothers because they helped shape who I who I became okay. as a, you know, as a as a person that, and as a as a basketball player but me D- damn D you, you, you can just add, be known you, nah, just, yeah, you can ask you can ask everybody like from a youngin like everybody was like yeah he the one was they was they was they on you though was they, they was like, like like beating you up pushing like, you around abuse okay shout out to your brothers though yeah, they got sure. you to the league man for sure it was abuse growing up and then you know when I look back at it like it was abuse that's a fact that's a fact so um what age and I'm gonna say this though, because this is an interesting question. Who really put the basketball in your hand then? I say probably my oldest brother, Lorenzo. Okay, shout out to Lorenzo. Yeah, uh probably so that he was the oldest and he was, you know, we we all were. So he's ten years older than I am. And oh, he got you by a decade. Yeah, and then my, my second older brother is eight years older than me. So they're okay. close. So, you know, he was you know, he was the oldest, so he was the first to do everything just about. So yeah, I mean, I was just following in both of their footsteps, but you know, he basketball was really his sport. So that he did you play any other sport? Play football. Uh, play a little bit of baseball, but okay. Football, I, you know, I, I could. I was nice on that on that gridiron. At Willow Ridge? No, I stopped playing when I got to high school. Oh, what? Yeah, I stopped playing them. It's amazing because, like, like, and it's funny because I was just talking about my cousin Mike James. He played football too, but I remember his coach made him stop in ninth grade because I used to go to football practice with him. He used to ride me on the handlebars because they, they, they used to practice in the summertime. Now, I want, I, and I don't, I don't regret too many things. Uh, but I wish I would have played at least a couple of years of football in high school. At okay. Least, at least my first two years. Just, okay. Just, you know, get that feeling. Loved it. Football dangerous though, man. Like It, it is. I mean, you know, they're they trying to clean it up, but, you know. Football super dangerous. And you you also play baseball a little bit too? A little bit. Just because I played quarterback in football, so okay. they thought I could transition to be a pitcher on the baseball. You know what I'm saying? But it was only like two summers of that. I want, I want to ask you this though. When did you realize you was nice? Because... I remember I was in New York when y'all was in high school, when y'all was coming up, and I used to we used to back then. There's no social media, there's no Instagram. You just hear about it. We hear about the famous Willow Rich. But when did you? What age did you realize like you was that nice? I mean, it's different. Now. I mean, it's different back then because you ain't have it wasn't a whole like we from Texas and Texas back then wasn't considered a hoop, you know, hoop culture. So we didn't have a hype like. Like you might have in New York or mm-hmm. Chicago, New York, that, right? New York was have, hyped up yeah. back in the day. Yeah, we didn't have that hype coming up, so everything for us was like grind, grind, grind. Like man, they still don't believe. It's terrible now. So, you, you know what I'm saying? Now it's yeah. So Shout now out it's to like Stephen Marbury. Now guys get the benefit of the doubt because they from Texas. Yes, yeah, popping. You know what I'm saying, uh, but uh, I say probably after my ninth grade year. So your so your freshman year, like after my freshman year, like. Going that summer when I started playing, because I played seventeen U off the gate. Okay, so so I'm, I'm gonna stay there for a minute. Your freshman year, that team that y'all had in Willow Ridge, arguably like one of the best 
high school basketball teams ever in high school. Let's just be clear. Yeah, that's, I'm pretty can, sure can, you know that. Can you repeat that though? Because you, 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 I mean, I'm not, just saying you're not even from Texas. Well, so listen, gotta, arguably we, one of the my best my high school teams ever. Texas, so no, no, but, but this is non-biased. Listen, I'm not biased, but we all know Willow Ridge. That team that you had is arguably one of the best high school basketball teams ever. When did you guys come together? Was you guys? Because I know TJ's from Baytown, right? Right. So well, did y'all start? Early so, so AU. Let's, let, let's paint that picture because everybody can say we cheated. Yeah. Uh, All right. It sounds yeah. like you guys cheated. I don't want to go there. All right. But. So TJ's from Baytown. Okay. He's the only one outside of everybody else that was on the team that wasn't from Mo City. Okay. TJ moved to Missouri City the second half of our eighth grade year. Eighth grade year. Right. I didn't know TJ then. Okay. He's at the rival middle school. I'm at one middle school. He's at the rival middle school. Okay. Both middle schools. When they go to high school, they come together. They combine. Right? And this is okay. This, and this is in Mo City. This oh, y'all don't know. Yeah. This is in Mo City. Okay. Right. So he was at McCullough. I was at Missouri City Middle School. Okay. Didn't I didn't I knew of TJ, but didn't know TJ. So ninth grade year, I'm supposed to go to private school. I wasn't even supposed to go to public school. Wow. Not even. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't even supposed to go to really rich. I was Can you imagine to, that if that that would have right. happened. Right. So God, I mean God, you know, it was God's plan. And so, long story short, I end up at Ruler Ridge. I don't know TJ's there. I know everybody else is there because I went to middle school. You know what? Get there the first day. I'm like two weeks late to school because I was supposed to go to private school and stuff fell off at the last hour. And I see him. He like, yo, what you doing here? I'm like, man, what you doing? I'm like, I live over here. What, what you so doing So y'all were surprised to see each other? Absolutely. Because everybody had heard through the grapevine that I was supposed to be going to private school. Oh, wow. Right. So to see him at the school and then him seeing me thinking I was supposed to go to private school, that's when we really connected we had played together that summer before a little bit uh but that's how we really all came together his family moved to missouri city the end of his eighth grade year like the reason the story is amazing is because when we think of that team we think of both of you guys making a mcdonald's all-american game so you rarely ever get i don't think that's that might have happened with, i think charlie villanueva him and um the will dang did that we made history when that we made, did it yeah i think we was the first like teammates in the same year yeah. to make it on the McDonald's game, if I'm not that, mistaken. Nah, that's definitely history. That's what I'm saying. So so, so when you hear about it, you're like, damn, they got two high school All-Americans on the same team? And like, you like, that really, that don't happen. No. Nah, you don't, cause, not, cause, and back then it's hard to make the McDonald's All-American game. Absolutely. It, it ain't, like, listen, listen world. Now, I'm not, listen, I'm not knocking nobody, but it was hard to make in the McDonald's All-American game back then. You know that. No, absolutely. It's a lot different now. It was super harder. You uh, you really had to like produce. Like you really had to like put up numbers. Yeah, you really, yeah. You really had to be putting in work. And, and and you had to have impact on the court. It's a little different now. I, I've seen the changes, but I want to I want to stay back in like beginning years of high school. So you guys come. So TJ comes. Y'all surprised. Y'all y'all just like damn. We we in the same school. What was your first thought? Like we gonna kill everybody? Man, like. Yeah, first of all. Because y'all killed everybody. Let's, let, let's just be clear. No, we did. But first of all, <laughs> it was a surprise. But like I said, we had we had kind of played together that summer, a little bit that summer, going into uh, our high, our first year of high school. But we didn't, like I said, there wasn't no talks about us going to high school together. We we didn't think, you know, we like I said, I was supposed to go to private school. So nobody was thinking about me going to any public school. And so, uh, but yeah, it was, man, it was, we hit it off right away. Like, Right from from the from the minute he was like, "Yo, what you doing?" It's crazy. Here? Like we was thick as thieves right then. Like hit, we hit the ground running, and uh, we've been running ever since, man. That's crazy because I was at the funding one year, and um, I think it was me, my cousin, and who else was playing on my team? I think Sam because I was playing, and TJ. I heard him talking. He was like, "And y'all came later." He's like, "I just need my boys with me." He's like, "I got my people with me. I got the same squad from like high school." Yeah, and. I was like, I was looking at mine. I was like, they about to destroy y'all. They been playing. Because having that continuity, it seemed like y'all just knew what to do with each other. And like, No, nah, I mean, and it, and it comes from time. But okay. also, him being who he was as a player and a point guard, it made it easy. Yeah, he's a pass first point guard. Pass first I point was like guard. that in my day. Right. With a record. All, you know what I'm saying? Was very unselfish, man. Always trying to help his guys. And then up here, like his IQ was like none other, along with his talent. But uh, yeah, man, he made it easy, man. And for me, I wasn't a guy who needed the ball. Like I wasn't trying to be, I wasn't trying to play his role, right? I was a scorer. All right, cool. I'm gonna run the wing. Let me 
Give me that rock, bro. I, I want to know this because, like, you're a scout now. You've been you've been around professional basketball forever. How did you guys not bump heads though? And I ask you that because D Young, you know how it is, and you know how it is. Like, you nice, he nice. You see it all the time. How did you guys? I've never heard about you guys ever getting into it. Great question. For real? I, no, great question. <laughs> I, and I tell TJ just all the time. He like, what you mean? I tell him this. I say, man, if we if this was if we was who we were in today's basketball, in today's culture and time, right? We was in high school right now, had the same talent, the same hype that, you know, whatever, and the same accolades. I say we probably wouldn't get along. Ooh. I never heard nothing about y'all. Because of the hype and media and this and that, right? Now, we was going through that back then, mm -hmm. but it wasn't no platform for people to the broadcast kind of said, their yeah. opinions. Yeah. Right? You know, when we first getting started, we had our family, they both, oh, he should pass you the ball more. His See? family might have been saying, I should, you know what I'm saying? I shoot too much, right? But me and him never had, me and him never had, that never got between me and him. But now, as a guard, combo guard, whatever, everybody think they should have the ball. Now, I got a guy who has the ball all the time. Now, there's kind of might be some friction, like, no, nah, I need that rock. Because you don't really think, you don't hear guys saying, oh, I'm a two guard no more. I'm a shooting guard. Nah, times have changed. Right, everybody's trying to be a point. If you're a guard, everybody's trying to be yeah. a point guard or a combo guard, or a yeah. playmaker, right? Everybody wants the ball in their hands. Not too many people are cool with running the wing and be like, all right, man, I, I got a guy who's going to pass it to me and I'm going to do what I do off the wing. Nah. So that's why I say, like, in today's time, we might have had some friction just on how the landscape of stuff is developed. Man, it's just crazy, man. Like, I, like I'm, a, I'm a big basketball head, so, like, like I said, my cousin went to the league, so all we did was watch basketball. We paid attention to everything. And I used to be like, I told my cousin, like, yo, these dudes don't, you don't never hear nothing about TJ and D. Ewing ever getting into it, yo. And they both like stars. I think, I think. But I that know. happens. No, absolutely. I, a lot of it, though, comes from, like, who we are. All right, you know what I'm saying? Like, to our core, like, we're both genuine, good people, dog. Like I said, I've, I've never, I've always grown up minding my own business. Facts. I ain't worried about what you got going on. What you what you doing ain't affecting me. I ain't it ain't got you know I ain't worried about it. So I never was envious or jealous of, you know what people were saying about him and the praise he was getting, and I think vice versa. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he was ever you know like like I said from day one, man. We was always always love between us. I'm all, we've never had no argument about no like stuff like that. If we argued, it was about like man you. Man, you playing like you step it up. You know get what I'm saying? Get your game like, right. Yeah, get your, get your game, game right, right TJ. Or, you know, just competitive, us competing against each other, or you know, on a video game or something like. Other than that, we ain't never had no real, like, oh yeah, I don't mess. With, no, we ain't never had no situation like that. So y'all going into your early years, ninth, tenth grade. Um, did you play varsity in ninth grade? So yeah, yes and no. Okay. So the, the start off the year, we played. We was freshmen playing on the sophomore team. You and TJ both? Me, TJ, and like four of the guys, four of the freshmen. Okay. Right? We what? had a crew that came. We had a crew. So everybody just talked about it. We had a whole, like, it worked because we had a whole team. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, shout out to Ivan McFarland. I was about to say, where's Ivan at with this? So shout out to yeah, Ivan. Ivan's not at our school yet, but. Oh, he Ivan's, wasn't there? Ivan's from Mo City. Ivan went to my middle school. Okay. So that, you know what I'm saying? So that's a whole nother it story. It sounds like, I don't know, D.U., it's, a, it's, it's, it sound like something going on here. Ivan went to you my middle stories. school. Okay. Right? Ivan went to. Mind you, really Ridge wasn't popping before. Yo, y'all had a squad, though. It do Be sound suspicious. Before 19, the fall of 1997, really Ridge wasn't what it had been prior to us getting it. Now, really Ridge has a long history, you know, prior to, but between like 94, when they won it with Paco and Ansu Cisse and all them, my, to my OGs, right? Yeah, 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 that's my guy. After 94, really Ridge took a decline for like three years. So that was another reason why I wasn't looking forward to going to going there. Okay. Right. So that's all right. So I kind of revived the school though. Absolutely. And y'all definitely put them on the map because we was in New York and we heard about Willowridge because of y'all. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Not to like I said, Willowridge was already doing great things prior to, but yeah, it, it had took a, a steep decline. Uh, but yeah, Ivan was from Mo City, went to Missouri City. Willow school. He was nice too. Like myself, people forget we had three pros, NBA players. Mm -hmm. On the same public high school team. I remember. Ivan McFarlane played in the NBA. He played. He went to the league too. So you know, that's yeah, crazy people, people though. People forget that fact when they talk about who the best high school team in in Houston. Do you 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 sound like you want to get something off your no, chest? No, I just I don't. I'm, no, I'm we, we here, man. I'm, we I'm, nah. Like, it, like, I'm just saying, like people people forget, like what we really had. Listen, let me let me ask you this. 
What was your what was your what was your overall record at Willow Rich? Uh, seventy five and one. <laughs> did you hear that? What did you say? Seventy five and one. We would think we went on like we won like sixty five game winning streak. I don't even like if if, if somebody tries to have this debate because this say we're a podcast. And they'd be like, well, there's another high school bas- basketball team in Texas that can even compete. Like, you can't say nothing because it takes a lot to be a team. It takes chemistry. It takes, like, a way. It, it takes all type of ways to bring a team together. But 75 and 1? Who would y'all lose to? <laughs> I won't name that school. They know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, that's they claim to fame. But shout out, you know. What was it, like, upset or they just, y'all, y'all just wasn't was feeling it that day? Nah, it was, it was a lot going on. But they 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 got us. So you tell me, y'all would have been undefeated the whole entire time. Yeah. Like when, when I mean, we older now, right? When you hear that record though, and y'all sitting back, y'all don't just be like, "Damn, it's hard to win ten games, yo." I mean, I appreciate it, man. But like I said, I think we enjoyed it while we was doing it, and we stayed. You know, like I said, we we never really got off track. So it's a like our story is unique, man. Uh, our sophomore year, because like I said, we didn't really play f- as freshmen that much. So our sophomore year, when we all started, like was really, everybody was on varsity for the full year, uh, I think we was like, tw- I say we was like, I don't know, twenty four and three at the time, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we had to, we had to forfeit our games. Were with the whole stuff going on at our, our school? Okay, saying we got guys, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was a whole, we had a whole issue. And so we had to forfeit our games, and a lot That's of people, crazy. a lot of people thought we was good enough then, you know, to, to win it all, whatever the case may be. But uh, so yeah, so basically, seventy five and one record is our last two years. The la- okay, okay. So yeah, so what y'all won like three straight championships? Two, two straight championships. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to ask you this though. In high school, who was the most, who was the toughest player for y'all in high school? Carlos Hurt. Oh, that's my guy. I just talked to him. Yo, shout out to Carlos, man. Easy. Word? Easy. That, easy. That's yeah. an easy answer for me. Los. Carlos is giving people any left handed, like yep. pull up. Man. Was he that yeah. nice, though? That Cause nice. Because I, I seen him play, but like he was that nice. That nice. You couldn't, you knew what he was going to do, and you couldn't stop it. And he was going to talk crazy to you. <sighs> that nice. Left, in and out, pull up, trade. What, I mean, get to the basket. Wow. Wasn't fast, wasn't athletic. Just a hooper. Could get it done. Yeah, so let me ask you this. Y'all didn't play y'all didn't play against Rashad yet, did y'all? Yeah, my freshman year we did. So when you were the freshman, Rashad was what? Senior. Senior? Got to see it. Wow. Up close. See this see this is the thing though. I tell like Houston, it's a lot of ball players now. I moved here in two thousand five. I remember when I used to go to Lucas every summer. Shout out to Lil John John. Like, you know what I'm saying? And y'all played against Lil John John too, right? Yeah, oh, yeah John, John was on our uh, AAU team. I don't even want to. I don't even want to have this conversation about who the best guard because John John gonna be calling me like, man, you know he I'm not. Big. He not. Oh, he gonna talk that best. Who's the best <laughs> guard coming little, out of high school? Little John John go. Little John John's a little cocky. He, he, and John, Yo, and John, he deserved the flowers. He that gonna he got, be man. like, ain't nobody better than me. Nah, like John. little John John. Listen, to that's this. my man too. John, my guy. Luke, little Luke played with us. In AAU, our last year. Okay. You think he got on the court a lot? Wow. Wow. So is is me and TJ on the same in the same backcourt in AAU also? Oh yeah, that sounds crazy. So you had three pros on that team. Who else was on that team? Uh, half of our high school team was on that team. That's crazy. Half, and then the other half played for a Nike team. But half of our high school was on that team. So Kenny Taylor was on that team. Also. Kenny was nice. Uh, Luke. Marcus Sloan was on that team. Okay, I know Marcus. Uh, Dad, we had some guys, man. Like I said, we most of the time the, the Hoopers in Houston, a lot of us played for us at least at least one summer while we was in high school. Let me ask you this: um, Who's the player that that probably could have went to the next level, but circumstances held him back? From Houston. From Houston, that you've been around. The guy, we just talked about. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Like he's the most, but you know why? Most we, prominent you know, one, right you know, there. But you know why? When we look at, look, because he still was at McDonald's. He still went to Louisville, right? But you know, like I mean, he still like. But if circumstances are different for Los, yeah, his career is a lot different. 
Yeah, you know, he, had, he has his opportunities. Yeah, you right. He has, he has a lot right. more opportunities to actually fulfill that dream. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, as y'all going into y'all senior year, y'all, y'all, y'all the best team in the nation. What's y'all mindset like? Y'all just, we just going to swipe everybody? Well, we, to, to correct you a little bit, we weren't, we wasn't ranked the best team in the nation, but we, were? but we felt, we knew we were. Okay. So we was, for once we got ranked as a high school team after our start of our junior year, we always got ranked, we was ranked number two. Okay. So we finished number two as a junior, and then we finished two as a, as a senior. Okay. But that's only because back then there wasn't no national high school schedule that we were allowed to play in. Right? So we never got to play Oak Hill, who was Ooh. number one at the time. Ooh. You think they would get y'all work? No. Who, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Before we go back, D.U.N., who's on, who's on that Oak Hill team around there? Let me see if I remember. So it's like guys that I know that was on that team were Billy Eadlin, who okay. went to Syracuse. He was nice. Nice. Uh, Rashad Roof, McDonald's All-American, okay. that went to Kentucky. Those two I know for sure. Now, whoever else they have, okay. I'm not sure. You know, Oak Hill be having, Oak Hill be having a... Yeah, they be having a crew, but... They be nah, having a lineup. Oh, Shagana Jop was on that team. Oh, big, word? Okay. Big fella, yeah, yeah, yeah. American, drafted out of high school. Yeah, he played with the Mavs. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. So, so I know they had them three. Okay. But now nah, I don't think they would have beat us. Do y'all think... <laughs> I'll be all over the place. Do y'all feel like a Willowers team would be any Oak Hill team? Yeah. Yeah, and that's I mean you know I got they got they got guys, but mind you they recruiting guys too. But yeah, I just said we had three pros. I'm on, just on a public high school team. D Ewing know, but Oak Hill be having like sometimes like four and five pros on the team. We talk about Stack B Jennings, right? So you'll put Willow Ridge high school team up against yeah, any high school team? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Mm, mm. Easy. The union, they gonna they gonna have something to say about that's, this. That's cool, and we can't do nothing about it. But easy. Them what op- we did, what in, what we did in high school, speak for itself. So it's not like I'm talking out my. That's nothing. a fact. Now nah, that's a that's that's a easy. That's, I mean, a fact. I, that's a easy. That's easy. You whoever Mount Verde, any of these, like easy. That's a fact. That's a fact. Um, everybody just not, not to, before we go, but everybody just talk about me and TJ. We had other horses. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it real with you. I I I have these basketball conversations, and you hear right. People people bring up Ivan. Yeah. People bring but people up, but forget about Ivan. Yeah, they do. But but like you got to be a real basketball person to bring up Ivan. No, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because they people be like, man, Kenny Taylor, Kenny shoot Taylor from half court. They be like, yo, TJ and D. You know what I'm saying? Like we had guys jumping out the gym that was six 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 seven. Like we had we had everything covered, right? Now everybody didn't go off to be. D one, you know what I'm saying? Because y'all had a good saying. team though. Had a great and a great coach. Yeah, y'all had a good. What's the coach name again? Ronnie Courtney. Yeah, okay. That's a so fact. Yeah, everything man just came together. But like we had a squad. We it wasn't just me and you. Know, we had a squad. That's a fact. That's a fact. Um, that senior year, y'all named McDonald's All Americans. Did you? Did you and TJ? I got. I want to ask this question because. I, when y'all get the letters, they come to the school back then, right? Right. Did y'all get them at the same time? I think we did. If I'm not mistaken, I think we did. But like we both was like anticipating it. You know so, what I'm saying? So wait, hold up. So y'all knew y'all was gonna be at McDonald's. Over we there. didn't know, but we we knew. You know what I'm saying? We didn't like you back then. You really never knew. That's what I'm asking. Like, you. Did, y'all, did y'all have we an didn't idea? Know, but we knew like yeah, we like it should be coming. Would y'all have felt some type of way either one of y'all wouldn't have made absolutely. it? Absolutely. You you know what I'm trying to say though? Absolutely. Right? Like like absolutely. Man, you and it wouldn't have been, I would have, you know, I would have been because I'm a competitor and I feel like I was one of them ones. Mm-hmm. I would have been pissed if I didn't make the, if I didn't get that. All right, man. All right. Yeah, it would have been nothing against him, but I would have been, I would have been, I would have been, and I'm pretty sure the same. I would have been hot because I had put in, I had put in a lot, man. You know, it was a plan. I had put up, it was a plan in place, man. I was like, all right, man, this, this is a goal of mine. I gotta, gotta make this happen. So to be so to even be named the McDonald's All American, like what's what's your, what's your mentality after that? Like I man, I've never I've never been conceited or you know what I'm saying like that wouldn't been, have been me. No, I'd have been to man. the mall, New Jordans, nah, never, New Chain, uh, never man. Like so, it was like I said, it was it was a blessing. Very grateful for the opportunity, man, and like it was even more special because I got to share it with my best friend and my high school teammate. You know what I'm saying? So that made it even more like oh yeah, like. This is dope, and you you don't realize how dope it is at the time. Nah, but that's like, a that's a like you living in the moment, like oh, that's yeah, like, like honor, like like I used to watch the McDonald's All American game 
every single year when I was growing up. I remember watching that game. I'm trying to remember. What was that game at that year? It was actually at Duke. It was at, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, yeah, it was actually, it, which I hated. I hated that. What a coincidence. Yeah. Who, who You remember anybody that was in that game? I remember everybody. Who was in that game? Name name some names that was in that Juan game. Juan Wagner. Ooh. Like I said, uh, Rashard Karouf, Jagana Jop, Tyson Chandler, Kwame Brown, <sighs> Eddie Curry, David Lee, Ooh. James White. Shout out to Jay White. That's uh, my guy. Mo Williams. Shout out to Mo Williams. He was on the show. Uh, That's my guy, too. Aaron Miles. Dang. Jawah Williams. Wow. Jawah, he went to North Carolina. He from Ohio. That's my guy, yeah. That's my guy, yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah I can name He came Kelvin on the show. Tober, man. <sighs> Many people, but like, that's another guy who you say Kelvin Tober was. What's his name again? Kelvin Tober. He went to Michigan, right? Went to Michigan State. Yeah, I always wonder what happened to him. Cold. See, I knew, I knew he went to Michigan or Michigan State. Cold blooded, man. Know? Cold. Just didn't work out at, in college, but talking about super nice. Like, he should have just came out of high school. I remember him. Because I, I, I remember he went to Michigan, Michigan State. I was like, he just, like, disappeared. I might be missing Julius Hodge, New York guy. Bronx. That's my guy. Julius Hodge, man. Juju. Juju Dad. in that game. North Carolina State. Yep. See, I, see, I was such a basketball, like, head. I used to know, I knew what, what school everybody was going to. Because in the All-American game, they put the school on the bottom of your, on the, on the tickle, like, like, unknown. Did you, knew you was, did you know where you was going then? Yeah. I had committed. I had already committed. I committed going into my senior year. By the time school started, I was already going to Duke. What, what was your hold up before we would go there? Cause you no, know, we none of us really liked Duke growing up. <laughs> Let's just keep it real. Your visit to Duke and could any other school? Would you have went to any other school? Yeah, I mean, I only took one visit. Okay. So once I got the call from Duke, I shut everything else down. Oh, you ain't t- you ain't going nowhere else. I just went. Yeah. Oh damn. But, the other serious opportunities for me would have been Kansas. Kansas. And uh, had stuff really fell in the part between Duke and Kansas, Arizona was on the table. Arizona? But okay. Kentucky, a lot of people, Kentucky was like, I was all in to go to Kentucky. They before, were stacked before, before Duke and anybody, I was all in to go to Kentucky, but that they messed that up. Man, what's so special about Duke, man? I tell people, man, it's the fact that we, prior to the, when he retired, we had the same guy in charge who was really good, one of the greatest, if not the greatest of all nah, time. Nah, definitely top five. Uh, he was there for 40 years, 41 yeah, he's, years. He, he's type five, man. So that plays a part into why Duke has been good, for, that good for, for so long. Along with the fact that, yeah, you're getting the top talent every year, but you've also had the stability, the leader, you know what I'm saying, there for the same time, who for the most part has, has been very capable of doing his job. Yeah, Coach K is like a super. I I never been around him. How is he though? Like, is he just like does, does he just demand so much out of his players? Like, like he seems so cool. Like just like OG OG like, Coach K. Yes. Now the Coach K that was the last few years and dealing with NIL and you know one and done. That Coach K a little bit different, a lot different. Okay. But the OG Coach K, Coach K that I played for, the Coach K that was the eighties nineties. Yeah. Very demanding of you know getting in your face. Absolutely. Is he like Bobby Knight? No. So okay. he he he's like uh, so he's like Bobby Knight, okay. but smarter. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So he understands like it's certain stuff, intense. Okay. Military, but you know what I'm saying? Best point background, but he's he's smart. He's not gonna do no, not hit no kids or putting his hands on his. Yeah, player. Bobby Knight he's was not, tripping. Yeah, he's not doing Rest stuff like peace, that. Uh, but uh, yeah, very intense man, and I say, always prepared. Preparation is like. Preparation, motivation is like his his number one and two. Like you gonna be prepared, and you know he's 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 a great motivator. You go to Duke. Um, what's that, Cameron Indoor Stadium? Mm-hmm. Is that still there? Still there. That joint's small too. Yes, yeah, it feel like you're inside of a lunchbox. Like way smaller than what it looked like on TV. I know. I've been there, and it's like mad loud. You ever been there? Yo, that joint is the the loudest. I've never seen nothing like it in my life, yo. Like, tell <laughs> tell the world about Duke on a regular basketball day. How bananas it is, yo. You really can't just, you've been there. Yeah, it's bananas. So, so it's hard to really put it's in the bananas, words. bananas, yo. Uh, 
because what you see on TV, when you see it in person, you like, man, this this is it. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's a private school too. It's a private school. It's different. So you know, so it's, it's a smaller population, of, you know, of students. Uh, but that's what makes it so unique. Uh, granted, I think now if they built it bigger, you know, it would. Yeah, Duke is Duke is one it, of the schools. It would still though. fill up, but it would have the same effect. Have the same, you know. Uh, but man, yeah, them fans right there on you. Jumping around the whole feel game, the energy. standing up the whole like they not sitting down. Yes. They standing up the entire game. What, they, they, your first year you went there. Who's there with you? So who, my first year was two thousand one. Uh, so they was coming off national championship, returning like eight guys. So Jay Will, Jay Will, Will. Was, Jay Will, Chris Duhon, Carlos Boozer, Mike wow. Dunleavy Jr. Damn, Dante Jones. Damn. That was that was like the, that was a starting five. What's, wait, wait. What's the practices like? Like playing against Dante, Duhan, J. Will, like, and you coming in, you like the freshman. Was, was they like the only give, freshman? Was they giving you hell? No, they they couldn't. But no, I mean, no, I mean, they wasn't them type of dudes. You know okay, okay. Like we, okay. you know, I, I didn't have to do. I ain't wasn't really no freshman rookie hazing. Like you know, I don't even mean by that. I'm talking about like on the court. Oh yeah, I mean, were they like man? You they older and they okay, yeah, and they. The, you know, college, you know, when you first go to college, you're really not big. You're not physically. Yeah, you're not physically, yeah. like, really ready. Jay so Will yeah. was so nice. Jake, man, I tell people all the time, man, he's probably the most talented player, if not, like, one of the talent, most talented players I played with. Word? Like, super nice. I remember him back in the day. I was like, this dude, Jay Will, is, like, destroying like he's people. What, he's what guards are now. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely. But he, he was, definitely that, was, he was that in the <clears throat> early 2000s. You remember Jay Will, right? He got caught. He got that. He had that motorcycle yeah, situation. If he, if he don't get hurt, if he don't have that that accident, man, I think he has a very very bright. NBA. Chris Duhon was nice too, though. Yeah, Dewey was nice. My guy, man. Duhon was nice. I used to like Mike Dunleavy Jr. I ain't gonna lie. I used to like Mike Dunleavy. I just always felt like I don't know. I feel like he got a pass for a lot of stuff. But I like. I, I used to like his game. No, he could play. I felt like he did. I feel like he played right. No, he did. He could shoot it, dribble yeah. it. Uh, yeah, I felt like six nine, legit six yeah, nine. He's six nine. He's super tall like he in real life. Dribble pass and shoot, and that's before that was even a term. Yeah, like he was dribble pass and shoot back then. Uh, Boozer's on that team. Boozer, his yeah. son is nice. You see his sons? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, no, they both can play, man. They yeah, both man. really good. They're both really good. They play Boozer right don't right. get no credit like he like he don't get that credit either though. He was easily twenty and ten. But you got to know though. Like, if you know, you know. He was like 20 and 10 for a couple years. Nah, maybe more. Like, if you know, you know. I'm, I'm going to tell you something that's crazy. I was I was somewhere and it was, people were saying that Carlos Boozer is the best forward to come out of Duke of all time. People were saying that. Mm. People were saying that he's the best power forward to come out of Duke of all time. I've heard people say that. That's better a, than Elton Brand. That's a tough, I don't know. Yo, better I, than Elton and Brand. I, and I play, like I said, I, I grew up watching. Yo. Like, I'm a, like, Duke Hitch, like, so... Played with Booze and Booze was nice. Who's nice? Mind who, you, I played nice against Booze in high school, so I saw I saw a different Booze that a lot of people <laughs> ain't even ever saw before. I saw Booze on the wing. So he was like that in high school. I saw Carlos Booze on the wing in wow. high school. He always seemed so big though. Yeah, but he always was light on his feet and athletic. Okay, you know what I'm saying. But uh, I have to get that edge to EB though. Elton Brand. I have to give it to him. All right. I get that edge to EB. Okay. And if we really, I mean. Really talking about the best power forward or big to ever come from Duke is Christian Layton. Christian Layton. Hands down. I forgot. He from New York. Not, where where he from? He upstate New it's York. It's not even close. Christian Layton. A lot of people lost money because of Christian Layton, man. Not even close. Yo, a lot of people. Shout out to Bobby Hurley family, too. Shout out to Danny and them. Um, so you stayed all four years at Duke, right? Yep. Did y'all win in, in them years? Nah, man. Didn't came up short my junior year. We lost in the final four. Who'd y'all lose to? UConn. Who's on that team? Ripping Loaded. Up? No, no, that was way, that was way before me. That's 99. I'm trying to think. Hold on. Let me try to see if I know basketball. Who's on that team? A New um, York guy. I'm trying to think. A couple of New York guys. Was Dyson on that team? No. Nah, I'm trying to think. Man, that's wait, that's I gotta talk to my boy AJ Price. That's yeah. He that's, from my now AJ after. Price from my neighbor. I'm just trying to think who on that UConn team when UConn won. Ben Gordon. Ben Gordon. He was on the Talik show. Brown. Talik, he from the, he from Queens. I just said there's a couple of new yeah, Charlie Villanueva. Charlie Villanueva, yeah, he was a freshman. Houston guy, Omeka Oak. Omeka, oh, they had a squad. 
God, yes. Yeah, they were loaded. Yes. They had like seven pros on that team. Three, yes. of, them, three of them didn't start. That's true, because Charlie V was a freshman. Yeah. That's when Emeka was destroying. He went to school with John John. Yeah. I remember John John was like, yo, he wasn't like that in he school. Was, man. He Look, yo, was John John not. was like, John John was like, yo, he wasn't like that when he, he was in school. Not. I remember when I found out Emeka was at UConn. Yo. And I was like, huh? <laughs> what? You know, he's like a brainiac. They like yeah, no. their family's like a t like real scholars. Like, no. but I never get John John's like, yo, when we was in high school. He wasn't doing none of that. No, he wasn't. I mean, he was just big and, you know, he could rebound and shot block, but he wasn't, he wasn't scoring. Was he the number one pick? Was it, Matthew? Was he? He came out the same year of, um. He came out in 04. Was it, was it Dwight Howard? No, I don't think so. Maybe it was. I'm trying if to it, think. If it was, Omega, he wasn't number one. I'm trying to think. But he came out in 04. After they won, either, they won it that year. So he either he was number one. one or number two, because I remember they kept saying, like, is he going to be number one or Dwight Howard going to be number two? You know, he wasn't one then if if because yeah if 04 he wasn't one if and Mecca just seemed like he really didn't have to play basketball though he just seemed like he was just Some like guys don't man he just no he just seemed like he he was number two yeah behind Dwight Howard right yeah see I told you I knew it was something like that because they were I mean I, I used to watch all the drafts I mean he's like is Orlando gonna go with Mecca and Charlotte drafted him I think mm -hmm. Mecca. He's another Houston guy. Another Houston guy. Shout out to Omeka, man. So, but he was even—he really wasn't outside like y'all, though, nah, was he? Nah. See, that's crazy. Nah, he wasn't. Number two pick, and he and like had to destroy college basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like he—that's he amazing, man. though. Like y'all probably was like, "Yo, this dude came out of nowhere. He was just same thing with Lil John, though. Like Lil John was Lil John because you know everybody knew his dad, and Lil John was always in the gym, so everybody knew Lil John. But Lil John. He didn't have the hype and he wasn't ranked coming out of high school. Lil John has something different though. He to to me, like I used to go, I used to like, I used to go to the um his father workouts with my cousin all the time for years. He, to me, he just was around it. He was no, absolutely. He, to me, his environment was nothing but basketball. He was groomed. He was yeah, right? and it and it, Him paid, and, John. And, it and it he was one it like he got better as he got older. He was or, little, though. He got his roses, as, you know what I'm saying? He got his yeah. flowers as he got, like, he got rewarded as he got older. But, like, he kept, he, got, he stayed with it, man. He got better and better. Like He, he was, was little, though. Like, John really killed it when he went to Oklahoma State. Yeah, I remember. Like, he was tanned. Matter, matter of fact, his, his team was in the, we were all in the Final Four together. in the Final Four together? Wow. UConn, uh, no, they lost to Georgia Tech. Oh, wow. Lil John and lost to Georgia Tech and they sent my final game and we lost to UConn. So three Houston teams, so three teams had somebody from Houston on the team. That's crazy. That that's that shows you. I think that's when Houston kind of changed with the basketball world. No, that class, our class. Yeah, class, okay. I think our class, and like I said, I'm not to dis disrespect or discredit guys before Houston. Man, was, you could talk that talk, D. No, you, I'm just we saying, know what's up, man. We was of, there. The high school class, the Houston high school class of 2001. Okay. I think we changed the landscape of Texas basketball. Was a Mecca in that class? Yes. Wow. And I doubt, but also, you got guys in Dallas too, but I'm just saying that Houston class we had was like, we had a lot of D1 guys. We had uh, four or five pros in that class alone. Lawrence Roberts was in that class. Lawrence Roberts, wow. NBA pro. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So you stayed four years at Duke. Yeah, unfortunately didn't win. That's crazy. I had a squad squad. Um, yep. Going to the draft. How many teams you had to work out for? I think I did like 12, 12. 12 to 14 workouts. When y'all was working out, did you have to did you have to go up against anybody or was it just individual workouts? No, nah, no, nah, that's the individual workouts be for the like top five. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, so when I'm guaranteed, like they know okay. you going top five. But now nah, when you when you trying to when you gotta really make it, damn, you going up against somebody. Who you know, you remember some of the people you had to go up against? I went up against Lil John a couple of times. Word? Yeah. Uh damn, yo, that gotta be crazy. Nate Robinson though. Nate Robinson. I had to work out with Nate Robinson. Nate? Uh, who else I didn't have? Uh, Nate Robinson, Raymond Felton was in the workout. Ooh. Uh, Jared, Jared, uh, Jared Jack was in the workout. Jared Jack, wow. Uh, yeah, all my workout, uh, Salim Stoudemire was in the workout. Ooh. I, I always yeah. thought he was going to be like, I thought someone was going to do more too, though, Salim, man. Like, like. Got game, but for a lot of guys who don't make it, man, it's situational. That league is different, though, man. It's situational, man. Like, you know, there's a lot of guys got talent. Like I said, I told you off air, like, 
it's when you got talent, it's easy to get, it's easy to get to league, and in relevance to how hard it is to stay once you get there. All right. So a lot of guys are just situational, man. If you're not in the right situation, then it's gonna look like you the one out of place. So draft night, you at the crib. Did you did you know where you was going? Did you know you was going to LA? No, I didn't. No, I was I was I was projected to go from anywhere to mid to early second. Okay. Mid first round to early, early. Okay. Was you was was you concerned when you was dropping? Or you were just like, man. I wasn't really concerned. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't really concerned because I, I thought I had a chance to go to Houston, hometown team, which I don't who, know. who they take? They took Luther Head. Wow. They took Luther Head. Yo, he's like four hundred pounds now. Really? Yeah, he's super big. That's my guy too, though. Shout out. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen Luther in a minute. Yeah, he man. came mad where he's super, super big. That's my guy though. Uh, Luther was nice though. Yeah, Luther was. That's crazy Luther was though. Really good. But yeah, they took Luther Head. Uh, so it, it was like a couple of teams I thought I had a chance to go to, like in the early twenties. Uh, yeah, but I mean, uh, it was it was meant for me to be in LA. So you you, you get drafted by the Clippers. What's your what's your first thought? What's your what's your, your where's, where's your mind at? Cause you talk about being drafted in the NBA. I was talking to my boy AJ Price. He from my neighborhood, and I was just like, just being drafted. You know what I'm saying? Like, where's your mind at when you just hear your name or just see your name on the tickler? Man, it's really like it's just a joyous moment, like relief. You know what I'm saying? You kind of like, kind of like you let a lot out. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, man, I, it was I was blessed, blessed to have that experience, blessed to hear my name call, uh, blessed to play in the league. You know, for the years I did. Uh, but I tell people a lot too, man. Like it was also a gift and a curse for me, how I look at it, because I was blessed to get drafted. Right, team took a chance on me, but also the team I got drafted to wasn't the best. So it wasn't one of the best organizations at the time. Is that when Donald Sterling was there? Yeah. Oh man, how was that? Like, cause, cause, cause I'm glad you said that because people don't realize sometimes it's about the system you get drafted into and the team you get drafted on. It, it could it could it could it could make or break your absolutely career. i mean if you, if, depending on what situation you're going to it can make or break your career for most for 90 90 90 percent of the players in the league it's about the situation they get to. the other 10 percent are your all-stars and superstars facts but 90 percent is a role player who has to be in the right situation to succeed and you got some one-off situations where god just you know still super talented and he going but like for the most part you're not in the right situation or you're not in the right role and it's not gonna work out. And this is this is this is this is 2005 Clippers. Who, who's the vets on that team? So uh, that summer after the draft, they end up signing Sam Cassell. My, Sam, my OG. Sam, I am. Yep. Uh, he used to get work. Oh, I, I just had Cat on the show the other day. Yeah, they end up signing Sam Catino. Uh, then you already had you had Corey McGetty there. Okay. You had Elton Brand was there. Ooh. Uh, those were the like real vets at the time. Okay. Uh, Chris came and a young Chris came and was on the team. Chris was nice. Chris was super nice. Chris like, was so nice. Super nice. If he took the game more seriously, man, like yeah, Chris was Chris nice. Chris would have killed everybody. Uh, a young Sean Livingston was on that ooh, team. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Uh, now we had a squad our first year. Guys was healthy. Okay. We had a squad our first year. We had a really good team our first year. Uh, Walter McCarty, like I had some OGs, man. Vin Baker, like I had some. Shout real, out to Vin, Connecticut. I, yeah, yeah. I had some real OGs, like I had some real OGs. But I was at Tim, I played with Tim. Tim Thomas was on. But that Shout was out second, to Timmy but, yeah. Tim. Uh, my guy uh, Howard Isley. Wow. I had some real Anthony Isley Goldwater. went to Boston College. Yeah, I had some real OGs, man. What's um, what's your welcome to the NBA moment? Welcome to the NBA moment, man. It's tough, man, because I, I didn't play as no, as much as I wanted to, right? So you know what I'm saying. I was sparingly getting minutes here and there. I played a I played a quite a few minutes my my rookie year. Uh, but I would say, man, it's it's tough, and it wasn't really a welcome to the moment. Like I realized early on in preseason, like oh, oh, it's like it's. It's doggy dog for real out here. It's real out here. Like, yeah, like guys, you like, oh man, he ain't that nice. Everybody nice? Man, everybody can like <laughs> guys that's playing, playing, they can go. Hey, mind you, this is a different era. Mm -hmm. So this is an era where you got guys like Lindsey Hunter. 
Shout out to Lindsay. Right. Mississippi. Like guys like that, like them the type of guys like I would say, like my walk to the league moment. Like okay. guys like Lindsay Hunter, I'm I'm coming in, he a backup, I'm a backup. He picking you up full court at whatever age he is. You know what I'm saying? And you think I'm twenty two. Think he not that nice though, man, right? He, man, dude chest was so like dude was so strong, man. He bump you with his chest, knock you all off balance. Uh guys like that, like Bobby Jackson. I didn't have that walk to the moment where like, you know. We talking about the super blood, like mm-hmm. guys like that, Bobby Jackson, uh, Derek Fisher, you know, them type of guys. I got a story for you though. If we talking about welcome to welcome to uh, welcome to the NBA moment, and it wasn't like at this time I'm starting, actually. So we playing the Lakers, uh, and I didn't know I was gonna be starting. So right before the game, coach was like, "Yo, D, you gonna start, and uh, your matchup is Kobe." Mm, mm, cool. Mm. I don't got no fear. What? Not at all. And this is Kobe and his This prime. is Kobe number. This is number eight Kobe. <sighs> Man, listen. This is like this is killer, real killer Kobe. We listen in D Ewing. Listen, right? So this is so I because first of all, I'm playing. I'm playing my position. Mm-hmm. I'm playing the two. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm like, cool. This is this is not gonna be easy. But like, all right. My thing was just keep him in front, make him shoot contested shots. You know what I'm saying? As much as possible. Uh, the first half go pretty good for me defensively. Kobe only got 12 points. Uh, only got 12, right? Mind you, he's probably averaging 30 something. He only got 12 in the first half. <coughs> Listen though, and we winning. Bye. All right. He only got 12. And he ain't like his percentages ain't great. He only got 12. The third. Is he talking smack to you? No, he ain't. Okay, he okay. Ain't, he ain't talking. He ain't talking. Okay. The third quarter, uh, only played like the first four or five minutes of the third quarter for whatever reason the coach. And mind you, I'm a young boy. And Come to find out, my coach didn't like to play rookies, but he trusted me from stuff I didn't do. Who's the coach back then? Uh, Dunleavy Senior, Mike Dunleavy. Oh man, old right. school Mike Dunleavy. So wow. he, he trusted me because stuff I did prior on, right? Mind you, I started this game. So for whatever reason, he decided, like, all right, man, we gonna switch it up. We t- we taking Daniel out. So he took me out with like three, to f- like three or four minutes into the third quarter. Mind you, I said Kobe had twelve and a half. Kobe ended up with fifty in the game when the shot. <sighs> Mm, mm, mm. But it was real Kobe-ish. Like three, two, one, fade away threes. Like pump. Are pump, people like pump, pump pump? Like I tell people all the time, like that that game that Kobe scored 81, I was at that game. Like, I'm I'm glad I, I I'm I'm not I mean I'm, I'm mad I missed that. But I'm gonna tell you what's funny. Like they, they had the 81 against Mike in them. Yeah. Mike had 36 points. I was at that game. But what I'm trying to say is like I'm not in the league. You played against Kobe. This being there, is it just like you watching it? Like, what the F? Like, are you like, somebody stopped this dude? Man, look, I, it wasn't like he was Kobe, right? The, the, when he had 50 on us, the shots he was making, guys couldn't play no better defense. So some players, like, a play like Kobe is really nothing, nothing you can do. do. Yeah, there's nothing you can do, man. It's like, you, you just got to just take the yeah, third. there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do outside of following. 81 is ridiculous. Yeah, I was, yeah. And you was down, they was down the way it was down. The man had 81 and they won. Like that's. Yeah, it was. That's insane. To have to have that mentality though is just like, I don't know, man. Kobe was a different type of player, man. Yeah, he was a whole nother level. Like, his levels to it, man. He was on, he was on a level of his, of his own. Do, do, do you feel like, um, I'm gonna go back to the, um, when you first started, but do you feel like the game has changed so much now where like that that mentality that Kobe and them had back like in y'all era is gone. Absolutely. So so you think the NBA is soft right now? Guys are making way too much money. So they just with the money to make you just want to just they don't, eat they, vegetables and just chill. Like I, that's how I feel. Like the guy and shout out to the guys making the money, but guys making so much money, man. It's like what I need to, what I need to be, what I really need to have a beef with you for. for yeah. You feel me? Like back then it was a, it wasn't really like it was a beef with some guys. And it was more so competitive, but like, man, you got something I want. But now everybody getting fed good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the 12 player getting like 10 million a year. Everybody getting fed good. So, you know what I'm saying? How hungry are most guys? And there's still some that's hungry. And it's still like, you know what I'm saying? But like, how hungry are most guys? When I mean, I'm getting 130, 120 million, and I'm the third, or fourth best player I'm on the, the team. Yep. It was never like that back in the day. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely a different mentality than it used to be. Um, I'm gonna go back to when you got to the league. Did you want to resign with the Clippers? I did. I mean, uh, so I did two years. 
the third year was like a team option. Okay. Uh, and I didn't know, like, it, it, what happened caught me off by surprise. I didn't know that they was planning on or thinking about even releasing me. Uh, I'm sitting on the, I'm sitting at the crib, chilling. Uh, and I get a call from one of my boys, and he's like, yo, man, you know, he, he's snapping. I'm like, man, what you talking about? What, what, calm down. He's like, man, I can't believe they just do. I'm like, man, what? Like, man, the Clippers, dog, they just released you. I'm like, man, stop playing. Damn. And he like, nah, for real, man, turn on ESPN. I'm like, man, I ain't, man, I ain't, I ain't got time to mess with you, man. He's like, no, nah, dog, turn on ESPN. Turn on ESPN. It took forever for that to come across the screen. Mm-hmm. I'm watching, watching, watching. And like my mouth just dropped, man. And I was like, oh, he wasn't playing. And so made a phone call to my agent, man, and just went to, but yeah, I wasn't, that was, it was unexpected. Uh, but uh, outside of, like I said, what I told you earlier, outside of wanting to play football, thinking I should have played football a couple of years in high school. Mm-hmm. Another thing I would, if I could go back and do was, would be not go overseas. Ooh. I was gonna ask you that. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you what advice yeah, I would you give to a, 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 a player coming up that got the opportunity to go overseas? Well, like I said, from my situation, I was in the NBA, okay. recently released, got an offer to go make a lot of money overseas, uh, but I knew what I felt, where I belong. And uh, at the time, you know, didn't really have a lot of answers about a lot. You know, I heard, got some advice from some people, but. And everybody say, and it is a business. So everybody say, man, you know, you in this to make the most money you can make. And so that's kind of the decision I made as opposed to sticking with how I felt in my heart. Like, no, nah, I belong. I belong in the league, bro. So I make the sacrifice, you know, and, and get it, get it, get it the hard way. But I took the bread and the rest is history. Did, did you, you feel like you moved too fast? Um, I remember. You left. I, I remember you went overseas because I remember y'all was coming back. You was coming back sometime in the summertime playing to fund the Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was working out with Luke. Yeah, he was at the yeah, small yeah. gym in, in, off in Bel Air. Yeah, in Bel Air. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I remember you was coming back. I was, and I remember you had left because yeah. I thought you was gonna go back to the league. But yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say I moved too fast. Like I said, just at the time, if information wasn't like it is now, right? And then I don't, you know, you, your guy played overseas. When you get them contracts from overseas, they want answers like, yep, right then. They give you like. A day, they give you a couple max. days, yeah, figure it days out, max. Like, yeah, man. Like, bro, man, what like, like ain't no time to think about <laughs> yeah. it. You like, I gotta get my girl, the guy got my family, yeah, yeah. I'm like, so, uh, like I said, I talked to a couple of guys and you know, and and, and uh, that I trusted, and they was like, man, you can't pass up on that bread. And at the time, it felt like I couldn't, but like looking back on it, man, I was like, man, you know, I what? think you could have signed with I somebody else, I should have, I should because I had worked at someone so hard, yeah, to, yeah, I think you could, you know, saying to kind of prove the naysayers wrong about what they thought I was as a player because I got for whatever reason I got the rep that I wasn't a point guard, which was easy, was an easy observation, I wasn't, yeah. But when I played my position, which at the time was a off the ball, you couldn't say that I couldn't play. That's crazy. Back uh, then, they said try to do that to Mike, they said like he's like a combo guard. And like it was weird back then because nowadays but it's that's all what the everybody same. is now. Yeah, nowadays every everybody in the NBA the except same. Chris Paul and, yes. a, and a handful of other point guards it's are all combo combo guards. guards. And that's why Steph I, Curry is a combo guard. I hate it when they did that because a lot of people. I, Dame Lillard is a combo. I guard. hate I hate that term tweener, yo. Yeah, that was yeah that was like they don't a say that term. no more. No, they don't because now you get to Man, be a combo. Yo, it's mad. Shout out to my boy Reggie Freeman. It's mad people that didn't go to the league or couldn't. Like Stanley, because they considered him a tweener, because they was like, he's not a three, he's not a four. You know how to, you know how to be on the draft. Yeah. We don't know what position he's going to play. He's too small to play the two, and he's too slow to play the one. You be like, nowadays, dudes are like six eight playing the one. Well, nowadays, I man, I think the league is just went to the fact that uh, they let a lot of guys, which I, I love. I mean, they let like a lot of guys just play to their strengths, more so worry about what they can't do. At least the good teams do. Okay. If I'm a draft you, man, all right, cool. We gonna work on what you're not good at, but we gonna put you in positions to allow you to be good at what you do first, as opposed to, you know, putting you out there and putting you in a position where you gotta use your weaknesses. So you so you would give the advice, don't go overseas, try to no, I make, would, try I to stay in the league? What would I wouldn't give that advice. Okay. Like I said, it's <clears throat> different for each individual. Okay. I started in the league, so, that's oh yeah, 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 harder. yeah. Okay. Now, I would tell a lot of guys, yeah, like 
if your first opportunity is to go get a bag overseas, I know what you mean. Go get that bag. Yeah. Because you'll understand that journey a lot better. And it'll prepare you a lot better if you get a chance to go to the league. But once you, if you touch the league first and then you go, you don't want to go overseas. Man, yeah. yeah. Nah, it's, it's, it's not even, you can't even compare that. Why is it so hard to get back in the league, though? Like once, like once, like, a person gets waived or released. It seemed like it's. It seemed like back then it was hell to get back in the it league. It is. Yo. Like I, now I think it's. Yo. Lot, I think it's a lot easier. You think? I think it's a lot more opportunities to get back. Man, now than it seemed it used like to be. It seemed like once you out, you out. Back then, yeah. Once you was there, it was hard. It was like it was very rare that you seen a guy get be playing the NBA and get out early, especially early, and then get back in. Now, I mean, you got guys. In and out, in and out. You got the G League now. Mm -hmm. Who's like, you know what I'm saying? It's a farm system for the NBA. So you all right, cool. I can go within G League. I can put my work in there. I could possibly get called up. You know what I'm saying? And it's still opportunity, it's still situational. But then now a lot more eyes and the world is a lot smaller now. So now we know what's going on mm -hmm. in Europe now. We can watch Europe, you know what I'm saying? We can watch Euro League games. We can watch Euro Cup. Like we it's a you know, the NBA eyes are they've always been yeah. over there, but like it's they really know what's now. going on. Yeah, they really know what's going on now overseas. So that makes it a lot. I think it makes it a lot easier for guys to have opportunities to get back on uh, stateside. What made you into um, becoming a scout, man? Because I really didn't ever see myself as being a coach. You want to coach? Nah. I see, but I see you sometimes doing that. Um, the broadcasting. Yeah, I, that's what I. So that's what I really thought I was gonna get into once I stopped playing. Okay. Uh, grew up a big fan of uh, Amar Rashad. Right, and I wanted to I wanted to study broadcasting journalism when I went to school, uh, so yeah. So I was like, all right, you know what, man, let me try it. Okay. And I tried it, got some opportunities, liked it, enjoyed it, and then COVID happened, and so that kind of threw everything in a tailspin. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then after that, man, I was kind of scrambling. All right, man, what I'm gonna do now? Because I was already at the bottom of the total bowl, getting started in that. Industry. Okay. And so. Uh, Got a call from a from a, as a matter of fact, Chris Duhan. I was on a phone call with Chris Duhan, man, and we was chopping it up. That's what's up? And he asked me the same thing about you, man. Hey, you you trying to coach? And at the time, going through what I went through, I was like, you know what? It's like yeah, I coach, right? Because I'm I'm trying to take advantage of it. Hey, it's an opportunity. I try. He's like, for real. He's like, man, I got this program, man, that uh, that I think you should do, man, if you trying to coach. I was like, bet, like put me in contact with the people. And the program was called the NBA Assistant Coaches Program. That's dope. So it helps guys, guys and women, trying that's trying to you know transition into coaching. You know, it gives them that platform to you know to network and and get those get their experience of doing that, and uh, being around the different NBA personnel and GMs and assistant GMs and and, and, and at certain NBA events. Uh, and I went through that program. And shout out to everybody that's a part of that. And uh, I went through it with with the mindset like, all right, cool. I'm in this program and I know what it's. I know what it's guided to do for you, but I was like, can you guys help me? Because I, I would prefer not to coach. All right? Can you guys help me kind of go into the front office direction? And I think I was one of the first person to kind of had that, had that vision of doing using the program to do that. And they was, you know, they helped me with that. And that's, that's dope. how I got on. Coaches are different nowadays. A lot different. Like these young boys, especially yep. at the college level. Oh yeah. But in, even at the end, I mean, God, like I said, God's making so much yeah, money. Dudes Everybody's making so, making so much money. Yeah, now, dude's man. like, man, I ain't listening to you, man. Like, yeah, I'm like, making $17 million a year, man. Holler at me. I got the Bugatti outside. Like, yeah, everybody's making so much money now, man. And, you it's, know, it's, 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 it's super, super crazy. You know, I got a lot of respect for coaching, which is why I was like, yeah, I don't think I want. You know, I got a, like, a ton of respect for my experience as a player and playing overseas and understanding what a great coach is, what a good coach is, and what a bad coach is. I was like, yeah, man, that's to be a good coach, to be a great coach, it's a lot of time and energy that I'm not willing to put in right now. Yeah, it's a I'm job, like, job. Yeah. Um, being a scout, Anthony Evans was talking about, he said the older players didn't, don't have a skill level like today's players. He don't know no better. Mm, mm, mm. He don't. I, and I'm saying that because I know you heard the comments. Um, yeah. I've been getting everybody's opinion on that. When he made that comment, and you being from that era, what's 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 your thing? Like? Well, I mean, he's speaking of a much older era, but he don't know no better, man. Like, uh, he plays and, all and, skill and, nowadays, and, though. And, no, they are, but man, I don't, they're not better players, though. They stepping back, they doing some stuff, but they're not. I ain't better. never seen nobody do. You have. It's just that when it, it ain't it ain't prominent. I was doing step backs in high school. They, 
D U. Not like not they like, like triple step backs. They, yeah, they doing yo, they triple like step backs. But yeah, the guys been doing step backs. The guys been doing fillets and like, come on, man. Like what? Come on, Jordan. Jordan was one of the most finesse layup guys we've ever seen. What I'm saying is like they, the older era are better basketball players, but some of these stuff these dudes are doing. And I get, and that's why I said, yeah, they oh are, they are super God. skilled, and, and I don't think that I don't, they're more skilled for sure. I don't think they're more talented, and I don't, and they're definitely not better basketball players than than the older generation of players. And Anthony Edwards is one of them ones. So that I'm not, I'm nice. not bashing. I'm just saying he don't. He he he, 22 years old, man. He didn't see no. He you, didn't, you think he's skilled though? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, he's super skilled, and he's like, but he's he got game. Okay. Like he can go, he can go get it. Regardless, but no, he's super, and he's getting better. Yeah, he's nice. No, he's getting better. He seemed like he from the old school though, because because he played with that like that mentality. That, he, yeah, he like, has that and mentality. And he be talking trash to no, everybody. He, he, that's what makes him. I think that's what makes him more special. He he has the mentality like, man, I'm I'm coming to kill. And he, he doing it with a smile. Like, you know what I'm saying? But he's like, I'm coming to kill. I don't. Like, you saw he went up against his idol, and was talking. He's killing like, KD, man. Shout out to KD, you my guy. Talking to him, but yeah, that's uh, that's man, that's what makes him special. Who's who's some who's some of your favorite players right now? We just we and and it's one. Okay, really like SGA. Ooh, super nice. Ooh, uh, Wimby. I thought Wimby in there. Okay, man. Wimby's Wimby's super nice. Uh, man, I'm going blank. But it's a lot of. I mean, it's a lot of really good. I, I like Luca. Wimby curse, what's the name out last night? I like Jokic. Paolo. Like it's, Paolo. It's, ooh, ooh. it's a lot of people don't, a, people don't be talking about Paolo, man. They gonna they gonna they gonna like, they, they gonna talk about like him. People more. don't like it's like people don't be talking about Paolo. Like JT, Jason Taylor, he don't he don't probably get the love that he deserves, but like yeah, he, they disrespected of, him this year, man. They really they they did it they did him dirty. Yeah, they disrespected they him. They did him dirty. Uh, that whole Celtic team, they they I think they go I think they're gonna repeat. I think they got so much to prove, man. They got a chance, but it's gonna be tough, man. Because the, I mean, the East gotten better, but the West has gotten a lot. better. you know what I'm saying? Like the West seems like it gets better and better every every year. So it's gonna be tough. Uh, but I, they got a chance if they stay healthy. They definitely got a good chance. I'm about to get you up at it. But I gotta ask you about LeBron. Are you surprised on how this guy's still moving and shaking and baking? I think we all are. But if you really, like, if, you, if you really, if you really study LeBron's journey. You you shouldn't be surprised. I got, I give him a lot of was credit. He, is he forty yet? I think he's about to be forty this year. I give him a lot of credit, man, because he's he's the ultimate professional, which is why he's lasted this long and why he's done it at this level. He's done it. Like the dude is the ultimate professional of, of how he approaches the game, how he take care of himself. You know what I'm saying? And so. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised when I when you really evaluate all that. He's still dunking backwards off the rim, man. He, I've never seen nothing like it. We no one has. I, I like it would never be another LeBron. That's like, like me and him always go back and forth. Like he sent me a thing this morning about like who's better, LeBron or Jordan. Since you here, look like you got some Jordans on. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna who keep you, that on. So 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 who you feel like is who you feel like is better? Come on, man. I, to me, come on, I don't know. I like. Come on, man. What era am I from? You from the Jordan era? Exactly. I, I try to tell him that, I, and I seen it. I try to tell my man, and I seen it. I try to tell him that. Thank you, Dui. Thank close, you, Dui. I wasn't there live, but but I've seen it so many times. Like it's levels to. Why everything. do you think he's better though? Like, cause mentality. Okay. Different mentality. Okay. Different. Taking nothing from Bron, man. Bron's one of the greatest ever. He's he's on, he's on Mount Rushmore. Uh, but it's for me. Jordan is like for me. It's Jordan and then everybody else. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. We ain't even gonna say much else. I'm gonna I'm ask you a couple questions before I get you up out of here. Put you on the spot, and then we done. First question is, who's the best basketball player to come out of Duke? Grant Hill. You sure? I'm positive. Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving's so nice. I wonder if Grant Hill will actually say that. He might not, because he's, I mean, he's a humble, modest guy, but Grant Hill is the best basketball player that's come out of Duke. All right. Another question. Kyrie or AI? Ooh. 
Man, you give me some tough questions, man. Great questions. Great questions. <sighs> Kyrie or AI? That's tough. That's tough, man. That's super tough. And I love them both, man. I'm going to go with AI. Mm, mm, mm. That's a tough one. It is, but they're are you going AI because totally of the different. culture? Are you going AI because of the culture? Uh, I mean, or, that, that helped, but no, nah, skill wise, because Kyrie got a following too, right? Kyrie's done a lot, you know. Um, I think I've seen Kyrie do stuff I've never ever seen nobody else do ever. But see, we all right. So we are talking about skill, just like you said. Who's the I was best. saying just in, just basketball wise, yeah, yeah. just basketball. But at wise. the time, we saw we saw Allen Iverson do stuff that had never. You know what I'm saying? His crossover was something that nobody had ever seen at the time. Yo, I seen Shaq the other day, right? And this is like my first time really seeing Shaq up close, up close. And I was just thinking about AI playing against him in the finals. AI like my size, a little bit bigger than me. And I couldn't imagine even going up against Shaq in the finals. AI was a monster. Like, man. running up against Shaq, like, trying to go for a layup, like. Yeah, AI was a monster. So I, I say AI, and I you know I give AI the edge because I, pl I played against AI. Okay. AI in his prime, AI in Philly. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. I, but Kyrie, man, super dope, super talented. Like, can't take nothing away from Kyrie, but that's a tough one. We go next one: T Mac or Anthony Edwards? Oh my goodness, dude! Really? That's a great question, though, yo. That's a great question. Shout out to T Mac. That's my man, guy. Come on, man! I'm not answering that. One, I want to start because what I want to do, I want to, I want to go the younger against the newer. Like T Mac or Anthony Edwards? So these questions are getting unfair. I mean, T Mac or Ant Edwards? To be determined. You ain't got no answer? To be determined. And Ed was still so young in his career. T Mac is a Hall of Famer. So you know what I'm saying? Like okay. Anthony Edwards, he, he his body of work ain't ain't enough yet to say. That's fair. I I I keep it like that. I keep it like that. That is a tough question though. That's super tough. But like, yeah, and Ed was too young in his career to be comparing him to any, you know. They 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 compare him to Jordan right now. I mean, he, the charisma. You know his athleticism. I, you know, we understand it, but he ain't. He ain't that. I'm, I'm gonna keep it big man. Shaq or Akeem? Oh, that's for me. That's easy, and no disrespect. Oh, you from his? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. For me, that's easy. Dream all day. Greatest yeah. center of all time. I could dig that. I could dig that. Our um, next one is gonna be an interesting one. Ben Bagel or Sean Kemp? And they got traded for each other. And and. And then Baker's yeah. nice though. Yes, like, so, you gotta know basketball. You gotta know. know that's that why though. I threw that question. Like yeah, that's but, a, that's one of the ones. Like, and that's why I was like, say that was my OG. Finn Baker's uh, so nice. But Sean Kemp though, the athletic like Sean Kemp, that athleticism man. 15, 17, like yeah. I could dig. It's the last one. Dennis Rodman or Andre Drummond. And it's Robin. That's not. That's a, that was the worst one. Nah, I mean. Nah, that I, ain't even close. Are you you going by rebounds? I'm going by rebounds, resume, like everything. Mind you, you heard Andre Drummond said the other day. Uh, but wait, my, you already said though. That's I why did, I brought it up. I didn't. Oh, he said he's the best um, rebounder of all time. And he's that's not. why I brought it up. And he's. You not. heard him say that to you? And it's not even. He's not. No, he said that. He ain't even top five. He's. He said that like he's been saying that I'm the best rebound of all that's time. That's fine. Yeah, he I mean that's fine, but he's not even top five. And I've been seeing. I was like, yo, he's doing this. He, he and not taking nothing away from him. He, he getting the <clears> job <throat> done. He's still in the league. He's still, you know what I'm saying? He's an NBA <laughs> player. Respect. But he's doing this in an era where ain't no bigs. That's a fact. Yeah. Dennis Rodman is not even real big. Yeah. Dennis, Dennis Rodman is a small forward. Dennis Rodman is like six, seven, six, eight. He's like six, seven. He's a beast though. And mind you, he started his career as a three. Mm-hmm. Right, this man transitioned to playing the four, play some five. You know what I'm saying? Like small ball. We talking about small ball five, like, and was still the best rebound in the league, one yeah, of the best defenders tough. of all time. Nah, that's not even close. Tough, man. Y'all heard my man said. They say we're a podcast episode. Probably gonna come out today. Matter of fact, you know what I'm saying? It's Thursday. New episodes drop on Thursdays. Subscribe, like, share. My guy D Young, I appreciate you, my G. Oh man, blessings. Appreciate we up out of here. The fastest growing podcast up in the world right now. You know, say word. Only fans, real estate, talking in fashion. Let them know what's happening.
growing podcast up in the world right now, you know. Say word. Only fans, real estate, talking in fashion, let them know what's happening.